Paris-Roubaix is the hardest one-day race in the world. The main difficulty of Paris-Roubaix uh, is the cobbles. No cobbles, no race. Since its creation in 1896, Paris-Roubaix has beguiled and broken competitors in equal measure. And this weekend sees the 112th edition of the race, known simply as the Hell of the North. Paris-Roubaix may be the race's name, but since 1977, Compagne, 70 kilometers north of the French capital, has been the starting point. Of the 260 kilometers, it's the 5,500 meters of cobbles that focus the mind and capture the imagination. 28 sections, the longest almost four kilometers. A bone-jarring, bike-breaking test of man and machine. InCycle travelled to Roubaix to meet up with the man dubbed the Cobbles Keeper. Frenchman Francois Dulcier is the president of Les Amis de Paris-Roubaix. Founded in 1983, the society has over 200 volunteers who tend to the race route. Our group has two aims. The first aim is to preserve cobble sectors for Paris-Roubaix and to fix uh, the cobbles uh, sectors. And the second uh, aim is to promote uh, Paris-Roubaix image. In bygone years, local councils saw their cobbled streets as a source of shame, a symbol of poverty compared to the smooth asphalt roads in neighboring cities. As a result, many were dug up. Today, thanks to the heritage work of the Paris-Roubaix Friends Group, the cobbles are celebrated as an integral part of the region's culture and heritage. From the long stretch through the forest of Aremberg to the tricky Carrefour de Lab, where Cancellara and Bonin have historically attacked. Francois took us to the Rue de Hem, a cobbled street some six kilometers from the race finish. If it's uh, raining on Paris-Roubaix day, it is very, very difficult because you can have a, a, a crash or you can have a, a flat uh, tie with your bicycle and it is very, very difficult for the riders. Rain on smooth cobbles can make a gruelling test even more treacherous, as it did in 1994 when only 48 of the 151 riders finished the race. The brutality of the race conditions has led to specialised bikes being designed. However, the harshness of the pavé does little to deter the riders, who are willing to risk all in an attempt to claim the queen of the monuments. What we always say is that somebody took the cobbles and just threw them, and that's what it is. There is a road and, and, and there's no structure in it. Ask the riders, they can confirm that the, the cobbles in France, it's, it's a hell, a really hell. Paris-Roubaix is dangerous, but uh, the Tour de France is very dangerous. Uh, Every race is dangerous, uh, you can have a crash everywhere. So uh, we are uh, fixing cobble sectors to avoid crash. With the exception of one brief interlude in the mid-1980s, a velodrome in Roubaix has always hosted the race's finish. On race day, this somewhat tired, nondescript concrete bowl is transformed into one of the most evocative locations in cycling. This is the famous Roubaix Velodrome. It is the place where Paris-Roubaix race finishes. Every Paris-Roubaix rider wants to win here. Any modern team bus can offer hot water and privacy, but the Velodrome shower rooms have become the race's symbolic inner sanctum, a signal that a rider has completed the hardest one-day race of the year. These cubicles pay tribute to past glories, a brass plaque honoring every previous winner. But will a new name be added to the roll call of honor on April the 13th.